Well, the interface with the video app is rather different. It always takes adjusting to. Hi, everybody. I wrote this little haiku about three great cities. One that I have been to many times, which I feel very grateful for. I've never been to the palace at Versailles. But, uh, oops, now I gave it away. One in which I have lived, uh, which was a pretty wonderful experience. It was a difficult, depressing time in my life. But the city itself was so beautiful, and I often worked downtown um, in the Montgomery Street district, and um, I lived near Union Square. I actually lived in what we called Tender Knob, which is where um, the Tenderloin and um, Knob Hill meet. I guess I'll leave that there since it's providing illumination, which can be a tough neighborhood, but not as tough as the Tenderloin. Um, this is my Madeline book. My mom uh, studied French lit when she was in college. More like French language. She doesn't really talk about French lit much. So. Here's the haiku. Open up Paris to California sunlight, our little apple. Whenever I have any kind of writer's block, I find that um, writing a haiku for me is the best solution. It opens me right up. The structure and the limitations open everything up. Speaking of which, the trailer video for this channel has 250 views, almost 249, which is amazing. It's like 27 seconds, no, no, maybe it's more like a minute and a half, of me talking about Jean Renoir, who is the grandson of Jean Renoir. John, my friend Jean Renoir's um, name is spelled J-H-O-N. I don't know if it's really accurate to call him my friend. He was the best man at my mom's second wedding, and we had a very nice um, conversation on the phone one time um, about um, his best friend, David, and my mom's marriage and their problems and difficulties in their life in Oregon. Um, and he talked with me about his grandfather, John Renoir, the filmmaker's philosophy about art and politics and society. And I remember he said, I don't envy you your burden about the difficulties of my mom's problems. And that was very touching. Fascinatingly, very interestingly, John is the great, 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 great grandson of the painter Auguste Renoir, who in my youth was one of my favorite painters and is still one of the painters I admire most. One of my favorite things about being in Paris, those, those occasions when I was lucky enough to be there, is to go to the Museum d'Orsay and to see um, Auguste Renoir's paintings. There's the one with the man in the blue suit. He's like a worker with a beard and the woman with the red dress and they're dancing together. It's amazing. There's another one called um, Etude avec Sol which is a beautiful young girl with beautiful rounded shoulders and long wavy brown hair. Um, we see her from about a little bit below her waist to the top of her head. Um, and, and it's primarily um, a, a, sort of a, a, a sort of a drawing uh, with paint in blue tones. It's amazing. Um, so he is the descendant of that Auguste Renoir, and they're very, they're rather similar looking, both somewhat um, short and slender. Now there was some irregularity, let's say, in um, the um, family inheritance structure. And so John has spent his whole life being a vegetarian and eating very healthy and exercising and um, having a very clean living lifestyle. So that eventually when he finally inherits the great um, Auguste Renoir family fortune. He'll be able to enjoy it a little bit, but fortunately he has a son and daughter, so he's always felt that the money will go to them and help them um, achieve their 
aspirations, and that's what really matters. So let's try the poem one more time before we say goodbye. Open up Paris to California sunlight, our little apple. When you're writing a poem, that's my kitty eating, when you're writing a poem as short as a haiku, every little thing matters. Are you going to use a comma or are you going to use a dash? Um, it's traditional in haiku to have the last line come with a dash because it's meant to be a sense of surprise. Um, I have a wonderful book called Love Haikus, but usually haikus are um, uh, it's Shinto religion inspired, or, or is it Buddhism? Or is it both? Um, poems about nature. And often the end is a surprise, something like, um, I stepped out onto the snow and I remembered um, the last time I saw spring, might be an example. Um, I was going to say I stepped out onto the snow and I remembered my true love, but that wouldn't really be in keeping with the haiku tradition, although I love subverting that tradition and I love the poems, the love haikus that subvert that tradition. And actually, um, it seems that the haiku um, descends from the uh, Japanese court lady poetry, which is not um, traditional haiku structure, 797, but um, consists, it is, is, rather, is very short, consists of short lines and has the same poignant intensity and um, very formal beauty. An interesting thing about haiku that my creative writing coach, Thea Sullivan, taught me is that it doesn't actually have to be seven, nine, seven um, syllable structure if it's a shorter line, a longer line, and a shorter line. The thing about short lines is that they convey anxiety, which can also be a way of conveying intensity. I love the artificiality of haiku. It doesn't pretend to be natural. It's not natural speech. It's something heightened. You don't, um, over coffee with a friend, say a haiku, unless it's a very special friend and you're having a very intimate, um, personal conversation. It's heightened communication. It's heightened speech. That's why there's such artistry in the haiku form. Okay, that's much longer than I had in mind. And I um, hope you guys can bear with me. I've been sick for a couple weeks. And with the quarantine and everything, I'm stuck at home. Although most of my videos have been, almost, I think all, all but one of my videos have been at home. But usually sometimes they're in the backyard or the front yard or they're at the Princeton Street House in East Oakland, or they're here in the Elmwood District of Berkeley. And right now it's pretty much just me in these three rooms. Uh, living room, which is really an all-purpose room, bedroom, which the kitty cat has taken over, and uh, my bathroom, which sort of serves as a technology room. So, open up Paris to California sunlight, our little apple. When Thea and I worked on that poem, we even had to decide what kind of apple did we have in mind. Was it a red apple? I associate New York City, where I've never been, with a big red apple. Was it a green apple? I don't remember what we decided, but I would like to think it's a green apple with um, veins of red, or any of you who are familiar with um, Angry Orchard uh, Hard Cider, there's Angry Orchard Rosé flavor, which is a special kind of French apple, which when you open it, the flesh inside around the center where the seeds are is red, and that's very beautiful. So let's say, yeah, that could be San Francisco's apple. Let's say that's the apple, our little apple. Open up Paris to California sunlight, flooding the, architect, the architecture of that California landscape that is reminiscent of Paris our little apple. Bye everybody. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I love seeing you guys on the live chats and I love chatting with you guys in my News About the Candor channel chat group and my genre chat group and other chat groups. Like the one that's um, just a fun place to connect and say hi and the one for musicians and the one for writers. Take care everybody. San Francisco, New York, and Paris. Wouldn't it be great to 
spend two weeks traveling to all three of those cities. That'd be amazing. Bye, everybody.